Hey guys, Rob Sambles here from Rob Sambles Photography. So, um, first of all, thank you for the great response to the last video I did about um, like what video should I do next? Because I had loads of responses, loads of comments on the video. Um, I also had some emails, stuff through my site, some stuff on Instagram, which was really cool. So, so thank you guys for doing that. It's um, that that was cool. So, one of the biggest things that a lot of people seem to talk about and want to know about is uh, how to do sports photography on a budget or can you do sports photography on a budget and there's lots of other people out there who talk about this there's videos there's people who say you can do this you can do that but th the biggest thing for me is is yeah like of course you can of course you can and now there's some you know there's some points around this like the, the biggest issue and the biggest thing people will say is that you will never be able to compete with um like the 1dx's um you know and the the 2.8 lenses and the the 400 mil glass and and the reality of it is guys is no you know what you won't be able to compete with that but the question you've got to ask yourselves and the question I asked myself when I first got into doing sports photography is do I need that? Like, am I shooting top level professional sports or, or am I shooting for fun because I enjoy shooting sports or because I want to shoot my kids um, playing sports or, or some lower level local sports when, when actually that, that's not what I'm competing with? And am I going to have somebody who is scrutinizing my photos for the levels of noise um, or, or any kind of blur motion in a ball possibly compared to, to someone else's? No, I'm not because that's, that's not the kind of playing field that, that perhaps we're looking at for somebody who is looking to shoot sports on a budget. Now, chances are, if you are shooting top level professional sports, um, then you know what, you're probably not going to be shooting sports on a budget anyway, so that, so that isn't relevant to me. And that's why I wanted to make this video. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about how I started to shoot sports on a budget. Now, I've grown my gear since then. I'm talking probably three years, no, probably four, four years ago now that I was shooting sports on, on a budget, so to speak. And I've grown my gear now, so now I do have some better gear. I still don't have anything top. You're not going to see anything here that's a 1DX or, or a Canon 400mm 2.8 or anything like that. Obviously, everything you see will be Canon, um, or at least a Canon system. Uh, one of my lenses here is Sigma, but, but still. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about how some of the simple ways you can do it. So l let's look. For, I'm going to cover bodies, and then I'm going to cover some lenses. And these are just some examples, guys, some, some examples, okay? So first of all, let's look at bodies. Now, if you want to shoot sports, the biggest thing you're going to need in a body um, is, and, and, and the biggest thing I'm saying here, is something that has a fairly fast frame rate so that you can shoot quite a few um, frames per second and be able to get some action or get some movement. Because when you photograph in sports, you need to kind of get the peak moment of the action. So chances are you want to shoot three sort of bomb bomb shots of the same moment to then get the best the best look at it. Now, some of the slower cameras, you wouldn't be able to do that. So that's a fairly important thing for me. Now, in my opinion, probably the best place you can start for sports on a reasonable budget now, um, and it was a bit more expensive when I started because I bought it brand new, but now I would say probably your best bet is a Canon 7D Mark One, Canon 7D Mark One. If you were to buy one used, eBay, something like that, you're going to be able to pick one of those up for just a few hundred quid. You, I would guess you could probably get one of these for as low as 300 quid, maybe something like that, used on eBay. I've got a grip attached to this, so it looks a bit different. It's just the, the, the body on the top is the actual 7D. Um, now, really good camera for sports. I started shooting camera for, uh, started shooting sports with just this one body on its own. Now people are going to say, first thing I can hear everyone screaming through my video is uh, yeah, but the higher ISO levels are rubbish on this camera. Y yeah, you know what? They're not great if we're being honest about it. I don't tend to shoot much more than about 2500 ISO with the 7D. You could push that to 3200, but it, but it does look a bit a bit grainy. Um, but th that's the decision you have to make for yourselves, guys. If, if you want to shoot sports, if you want to shoot football on, on January at 7.30 in the evening and it's going to be dark and it's going to be local league and it's under rubbish floodlights, 
probably isn't the way to go for you unless you can trade off and get a lens which is really fast like an f 2.8 or faster even then maybe you might be able to get that trade off or you're just going to have to slow your shutter speed right down those are the kind of trade-offs we have to make but what you can do is use this at, this is a great lens for daytime football I still use this now for daytime football. I've had photos, pub, paid photos published of a football game shot with this 7D camera this year, 2016. So it, it is absolutely fine for shooting football. Don't let anyone tell you it's not, because it is. I also shoot some basketball with this indoors. When I'm shooting basketball indoors, I tend to use a lens that goes right down to like f2.0 or 2.5 so I can then get my shutter speed faster without having to go to um, the really high ISO levels. So that's quite a key thing. So that's a good starting point for a body. Now, look, there's other cameras out there as well. There's a Rebel, um, you know, there's the, the, like things like the T5, th those kind of cameras. They could still be good too, but I haven't used those. So I'm trying to go on my opinion on what I did and what I started off with, okay? So, lens. The biggest thing you're probably gonna need with sports is something with some reach, a longer lens. Now, the first lens I ever started off shooting sports with was the Canon EFS 55 to 250 mil. Now, I don't have that now. I've sold that on since that time. But that was the first lens I started shooting sports with. I shot football outdoors in the daytime very successfully with that lens, with this 7D, and I got some nice shots from it. The trouble is with that lens is um, it has a variable um, uh, aperture. So it goes from, I think, f4 to, I think when you zoomed right out, it's f5.6. So the trouble is, in the evenings, floodlights, anything like that, you, you probably would have to forget about that one, guys. That, that would be too hard. But in the daytime, 250 mil, bearing in mind you get the crop factor for this, gives you more than enough reach. And in the daytime, you're fine. F4, F5.6, in the middle of the day shooting football, you're going to be totally fine with that. So that, to me, is a really decent budget, body and lens combination that you could happily go and shoot your kid's football game on, on an afternoon after school when the sun's out. You would be absolutely fine shooting that and that would be a good way to go. So what, what would kind of be the next stop up from that? So for me, my next stop up from that was to move to the 7D Mark II. Now I've used other bodies in between. I had a, a 1D um, Mark III for a bit. Um, I did use a 1D Mark II, but to be honest, I, I personal view, I didn't think that was even as good as the 7D, so I didn't really stick with that. But 7D Mark II. Now this fixes some of the problems with this. This is much better at a higher ISO level. Um, I happily shoot this up to, you know what? I, I have, again, published photos, published paid for basketball photos, shot with this 7D Mark II at 10,000 ISO. Um, did they look great? Were they 100% sharp and no grain whatsoever? No, but I still got some decent shots with it. The beauty of this it has even a faster frame rate than this. Um, I'll be honest with you guys, off the top of my head, I don't know what they are. I think this one might be like six or seven frames per second, whereas this one I think is nine. So um, it's, you know, it's this one, this one is quick. Um, so fast, uh, ISO level's decent with this one. Is it as good as a 1DX? No, but it's, but it's good in, in my opinion anyway. The other thing I didn't say about both these guys is these cameras, both of these, in my opinion, have great autofocus systems. I love the autofocus system in the uh, the Mark II. The autofocus system in the in the 7D was actually it actually great as well. I always shoot in um, our servo mode and I always use back button focus and and I've I've had some great results with that. Really haven't struggled with focus at all with the 7D and same with the 7D Mark II. So both really good bodies. Now this one's more. We said that was a few quid. I think if you bought one of these used, you could probably get this for under a thousand pounds. I think to buy one new, you probably would be looking at like, I don't know, somewhere between probably a thousand pounds, 1200 maybe, something like that new. It depends where you buy it from as well. Look, if you guys wanna, you know, if you guys wanna look at gray market stuff, Hong Kong, things like that, you know what you get, you get it cheaper. Um, but then sometimes there's issues with warranties and stuff like that. So I won't give advice on that. That bit's up to you guys. But um, 7D Mark II is a great step up. And we're still talking about like a third of the price of a 1DX with, with the 7D Mark II. Okay, so um, 
what would a step up be in a lens? So my first um, step up with a lens, something which I actually bought fairly quick early on, so probably about three years ago now, was the Sigma 100 to 300 f4. I loved that lens. I shot quite happily, loads and loads of football with that. I, I shot football under floodlights with that lens, um, with the 70 Mark II. The trouble was with that, with f4, um, so I had to sacrifice some shutter speed. So I had to drop my shutter speed down to kind of 500th of a second, something like that, which does sacrifice um, some of you being able to freeze the motion. And if someone is full on just kicked a football, that ball might be slightly blurred at 500th of a second or, or the foot might be. And, and that's um, a bit of a trade off that you, that, you have to, that you have to look at. That was a great lens there guys, the Sigma 100 to 300 f4 for Canon. So what was my next step up from that lens? A lens which I've got right here and I still use right now. This is the Sigma 120 300 f 2.8. Now the downside with this, I actually don't think that the focus on this, the autofocus, is as good as the Sigma 100-300 f4. I don't think it's as good. It's still decent, like I don't struggle to use it and at, at all, I mean at all, but it's not as good. The advantage of this, the big advantage, is this is an f2.8 lens, so I can quite happily shoot on the floodlights. Um, I can shoot on dull days. I could shoot indoors, basketball, um, so, uh, that that is the next step up. W what would my next step up from this be? Depends what sports you're going to shoot, guys. One option would be to go for like um, uh, a Canon 7200, something like that. The f2.8, the f2.8 Mark II um, IS lens is like really, really good. I don't own one. I've used one a few times. Uh, but but that said, the um, the 7200 f2.8 the first model the mark one that that's a good lens still is it as good as the latest model no of course it's not but but it's still a good lens so don't let people tell you it's not great just because it's older you could buy a um a canon l lens 70 to 200 f2.8 i would imagine for probably 600 quid 700 quid maybe so that's a good trade-off you know compared to uh especially bearing in mind at the 200 mil you get the crop factor of the 72 compared to um, what a, a thousands of pounds um, 300 or 400 f2.8 Canon is it, huge again there are the 70 to 200 f4s the Canon lenses out there but um, I from that trade-off with the f4 to the f2.8 because I shoot a lot of basketball I, I needed the f2.8 which is why I've got this Sigma right here so another great lens, a budget lens, and actually, you know what? This is for everything, not just sports, but a lens which I, I, I actually really love, which I've, I don't use it as much, I guess, now, but, but I've still kept it because I like it and I use it randomly if, like, if I'm out and about with my family, something like that. This is the Canon 50mm um, f1.8, and the f1.8 is probably the best thing about it. Uh, this is the STM version. This is the slightly newer version with the metal mount. Um, the older version, uh, the older uh, version is the um, people call it like the Nifty Fifty, the plastic one, uh, which was great. I, I shot two whole seasons of basketball with that. Had image, images published with it, the whole lot. This is a great lens for basketball. The 50 mil focal length combined with the crop factor of a 70 Mark II, um, you can bring that down to like f 2.0, f 2.5. You can get some great, great clean basketball shots. I still will use that combination now at, at a paid professional basketball job, the 70 Mark II with the 50 mil STM. That combination, some great, great basketball shots and a really good combination. So, um, obviously we're stepping up in price a little bit here. I, di I didn't say this one. I think you can probably get this for like 150 quid, maybe less than that, probably. Um, this lens here, I bought this used for, I think, 800 pounds. You can probably buy it used for um, less than that now. But this is the um, fairly basic model. You can get like the OS and, and the new sport version of this. The OS sport version of this lens is supposed to be like out of this world but the, there are reviews out there where people will compare it with the Canon 2.8 lens and say it's good so that's worth a look as well um, so I think about £800 I bought this one for here 
so what would the next step up be now guys so i'm actually in the middle of making the step up now because this is my off season and um i have just shot a whole season of sports so i have kind of you know factored in some funding from my money from this season into getting the new lenses i've actually just um upgraded i've just bought a second 7d mark ii and i will be selling my my 7d mark one i'm selling on um if anyone's looking for a 7d guys i, I can vouch for this being probably the most well cared for 7D anywhere. So if you're looking to buy a 7D, um, feel free to get in touch with me. Um, but I've just bought a second 7D Mark II um, so that I can run with both. And also the fact that both cameras will be exactly the same will help me as well. Um, I probably this summer will invest in a Canon 70 to 200 F2.8. Um, I don't know exactly which model yet, but I probably will do that. Um, I've got a couple of other lenses as well which I use but they are a bit more money so they're not budget lenses so I'm not going to feature them in this video because this is about what you can do to make it as cheap for you as possible. But honestly guys to kind of round off the video if you sat there thinking I really want to go photograph sports, I want to go photograph my kid playing something, you know what a Canon 7D Mark I with the Canon 55-250 to um, EFS lens you will get some nice good football shots with that out there in the daytime. You really, really will, trust me, you can do it. You can do it. So sports photography can be shot on a budget. Will it be as good as the guy sat next to you with 10 grand's worth of gear? No, it won't, but probably that's not what you're aiming for. That's not even what I'm aiming for, you know? I'm not off there shooting the Olympics or the World Cup. I'm, I'm shooting kind of more basic level sports in the UK. Um, I do shoot some Premier League, or at least Premier League Academy stuff. Um, so sometimes there I'm competing against guys with better gear, but but you know what? I just said the word. I'm I'm competing with them with what I got here. So there you go. Anyway, guys, I'm going to waffle if I carry on too much. So um, any of you guys who haven't checked out my other social media, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, Rob Sambles Photo um, is my Twitter handle. Same Rob Sambles Photo is my Instagram. Um, I've got my page on Facebook, guys. Check that out. Uh, subscribe, like comment on the video please it means a lot to me um thank you very much i hope it was useful let me know next video will be soon guys it won't be as long as the wait for this one promise all right thank you